Why are we here today? We're here to talk about your latest release on AirGrid, which is called Emergence, an EP with five tracks. Um, you should not pick your favorites ever, but I picked this one as my favorite release of yours. I love Emergence. Cool. Uh, it, it's the third one, right? Uh, that you've released with AirGrid. Right? Yeah. It's X74, the first one. Yep. And then it was something tomorrow. Consequence, uh, consequence tomorrow. of tomorrow. <laughs> why? Why emergence? What? What is the the meaning behind this ominous title? Um, the way I title things is that I just kind of wait until I'm somewhere in the middle of mixing. Uh, I go through like a two-step mixing process where first I mix each track to like 80% done, and then I stop, and then I work on the full release as like a final stage. And when I'm doing that, I'm trying to get everything to sound consistent. And that was the concept that came to mind as I started listening to it was it starts off in this very spastic IDM style direction. And over the course of listening to it, it kind of gains more and more structure uh -huh. in terms of the form of how things are put together and landing on the sustained tone piece. And like that transition, it's like you're going from this place of having chaos and disorder that's kind of being disrupted and settling down to a place of what most people are perceiving as uncomfortable stability. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, like you're emerging into a new place. Hmm. It just kind of naturally. Oh, oh very brainy. Also, very it's also, brainy. It's also that the last track was one of those tracks that I think of as having discovered as opposed to consciously written. Mm. And that I started it and I kept adding to it, but there was never a point where I sat down and said, I'm going to make a track that sounds like this. It was more of, right. I'm going to record a performance. And then a few months later, I'm going to perform on top of that with something else. And then there is a one day where I just added like three voices at once and kind of said, okay, this is done. Everything kind of ends like this, this actually comes from, uh, astrophysics everything is expected to eventually end in like cosmic scattered debris uh, oh, entropy yeah um which i had a release titled that explicitly at one point it's like everything that we do in life we're here in a moment doing things with intention uh and what matters is where we are right now and so you know i associate your releases very often with uh a certain level of despair is kind of always there as an undertone, you know, uh, there's some kind of like turmoil that's just always remains unresolved in your tracks, kind of like, you know, there's like you hope for that glimpse of like, oh, everything's going to be fine. And then it's just kind of like, no, the disruption is followed by more disruption and, and, and <laughs> which you know, I think coincides very nicely with the times in which we live. And we had a conversation about this, uh, I think, on the consequence of tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, where I think that kind of emotional note rings throughout the tracks. You know, there's uh, some kind of like emotional tension that can be felt in your music. I, I had this analogy when I listened to it of like this dark science fiction film score you know kind of like it the the progress of total destruction of a space station or, or like evacuation of a imploding planet with gigantic starships and you know like and then scrambling and then eventually mut mutiny that takes place and then the inevitable total destruction of everything right that <laughs> kind of wrapped it all up i felt like there was you know like a a storyline that you follow with the tracks, which, you know, like, to me, it was so visual. Your, uh, your specific interpretation of that is uh, one interpretation of that. Mm -hmm. I care a lot about sequencing of tracks so that you've got an arc. Um, for me, it's kind of like an arc of energy through the release or uh, a transition of form, which was very explicit in this one. Um, like each track will go in a different direction after the track before it leading somewhere. Right, right. That is not usually something that I set out to do at the beginning, but it's more so when I get to the point of starting to sequence tracks, I'll start to put them in an order that starts to make sense and move things around. But I, 
uh, these EPs, I spend enough time on them that uh, that process plays out over weeks to a month or two. So I reorganize things a number of times until it just kind of settles down. When I'm in the middle of it, I'm thinking about interesting timbres. Mm. And I think that might be the cue because for me, what I think of as an interesting timbre when you're designing a sound is something that's a bit abstract, not mm -hmm. thorough in the world. But there's also something that's popular with film composers working. I want there to be room for you as the listener to form that story for yourself and yeah. think yeah. about yourself in that. There's you know, a certain organic quality to what you do. And sometimes you also use that in visual form, but then sometimes it's very procedural and very algorithmic and very yeah. you know, like driven by the computer. your sound. Um, yeah. There are certain character, characteristic elements that, you know, are recurring in your compositions, you know, like this pulsar laser sweep like sequences, you know, that just keep cutting like sharp knives that seem to be a recurring theme. Um, and almost in your tracks seem to replace a traditional drum kit or traditional drum beats. So let's start it off uh, with some ideas I put on this uh, release called Mojave, which uh, was a mix of Nord Modular and Max MSP, where I was programming sequencers in Max and also doing things like driving drum sounds through oscillators as an FM voice. Mm -hmm. and it's just carried that thread through. But it's the fact that like I'm taking the percussion sound and driving it through something else instead of using it as a raw sound that takes it into that place. Like uh, you can decide, describe it as sci-fi sounds or laser sounds. or Yeah, yeah. I mean, for lack of a better term, that's kind of what comes to mind. It's a dominant sound. It's something that is very, it stands out and it's created the signature sound of yours. Anything that I do has some limitations on it. Like I was describing how I put down notes for tracks. It's always like starting from a place and that's kind of already boxing myself in. Mm -hmm. But that re box, regardless of what it is, is a creative tool for me. So it's like you define the canvas within which you're going to create. In, in terms of like what the future holds, I know, so like we're, we're busy with a couple projects on AirGrid, but you for yourself, you just released this EP. Uh, is there any like live show stuff or is there any like big, big announcements? Um, nothing that's like a big announcement. Um, like we've got the projects with AirGrid. I have a couple of projects with some Bay Area musicians that have been long in progress, one for over a couple of years at this point, but they're, oh, both, wow. they're both sort of, start of see, starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Looking forward to getting back to more live performance. Uh, the latest pandemic wave has kind of paused everything culturally around here, probably more so than other places. Um, I, it's always funny to me is that when I'm in the middle of working on this material, I'm quite entertained when it's working well. Mm -hmm. So like on this release in particular, when a couple tracks kind of came together and started to feel exciting, mm -hmm. I, was, I was just like laughing. <laughs> I was like, this is great. Oh, nice. <laughs> Is that when you know that a track is done? Like, how do you know? I always wonder, you know, how people experience that. Oh my God, it's done. Don't touch it anymore. Yeah, because like when I hit that point, I still have a long list of ideas to try with it. And it's like, no, stop. <laughs> but it's funny because in the middle of that process, like it's a very, like I don't have a big picture feeling for what the material even is. And then when I go back to do the final mixing on it, Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, wow, this is a lot heavier than I remember it being. Oh, nice. nice. So it's interesting in that, like, from a creative standpoint versus a listener standpoint, they're two very different places for me. Like, from a creative standpoint, it's I'm just taking ideas from um, both building abstract rhythms and abstract sounds and some more uh, classical composition ideas and putting them together. But they just land in this place. Mm -hmm. As a listener, it's a different experience. But well, you actually just kind of proved my point. It begins and it ends with an emotion. No matter what kind of music you make, no matter what the level of, you know, how, how abstract you, you want to take it or how big or small your canvas is, 
if there's no emotional connection and at the end of the road you're like whoa <laughs> okay if you don't have that might as well not do it